All right, so let me get started here. I'm going to share my screen. And then give me just a second to get organized so that I can see all of your black screens. <laughs> but I can see if anybody has any questions. All right, perfect. So today we're going to work back in V-Ray. So as I said, we've been we've been kind of bouncing back and forth. So we did a couple days in Rhino, then we come and talk about V-Ray, then we go back and talk about Rhino a little bit, and then we'll come back and talk about V-Ray. Well, today is one of those V-Ray days. Um, and I deliberately didn't have class on Monday so that I could talk to you live about this stuff today, because I think it's so important that I want you to get exposed to it and really understand how these materials are, are made and, and put together. I know that we're gonna have a slight problem with one of the websites. Michelle pointed it out already this morning. I had a feeling that it was gonna be still bad, uh, even though I tried to check on it earlier, uh, but I thought it was worth a try. So we'll solve that problem. But today is fundamentally about V-Ray materials and kind of how they're made up and how we create a V-Ray material to look like something. And I have some examples here of the various layers that go into creating a material. I'm going to jump back and forth into Photoshop to show you these examples and uh, as we start to build up our particular material. The, the first material that I'm going to work with in creating is a single shingle siding texture. And I think it'll make a lot of sense as I start to put the whole thing together. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Rhino. And uh, I actually, I should have, I should have opened up the canvas page for this. So hold on one second. Let's open that up because there's a piece that I want you to download. Oh, come on. Maybe not. Maybe the computer doesn't like me today. All right, let's try it again. All right, hold on a second. I got to get my password here. What? All right, so I apologize for that delay here. But one of the, the sample files that we're going to be working with is linked on your exercise 210 page, which is right here. And it's this materials test.3dm file. So I'd like you guys to download that because you're going to be working with that today. Um, so I'll go ahead and I'll download it. I'm going to save it on my remote desktop here. And actually, truth be told, I probably already have it. Yeah, I do have it. So we'll just add a little dash 2022. And I have to make sure I keep it. So let's push that up arrow and choose keep. There we go. So I can open that up in just a little bit. But as we're starting to explore these materials, we need to look at the files that make up the various materials. Now, I'm going to use, like I said, an example that I have already downloaded on my flash drive here. And actually, I'm incorrect. It's not there. So let me look in my resources. This is all, these are files that I have saved on my um, OneDrive. And the one that I want to show you, let's look at VRA materials here. This would be under citing. It's wood, and we're going to look at that shingle cedar siding. So if I look at this particular material, you can see that there are different files that kind of make up what's happening in this particular material. There's a diffuse, what's called a diffuse map. There's a shingles bump map. 
there's a shingles displacement map. Now, depending on what the material is, you could have a variety of different files that are in here that help to make up this particular material. So let's take a look. I'm going to go ahead and open up that. That's we've got to get cleaned up here. I'm going to open up that materials test file. Stock this. Let's go to file and then open. And there's my materials test file. And so this is an object that I made for you so that you can practice with the materials on it. It's a sphere sitting on top of a cube. But I'll use that as kind of a test case for what it is that I'm creating. Now, when we, when we work with V-Ray, a lot of materials are already pre-made for us. So if we open the V-Ray asset editor, there we go. Everything that's over here on the left side here, all these materials, these are the standard materials that come with V-Ray. And we've been using those kind of extensively for right now. But we can create materials from scratch. And that's what this is really about. And the reason that I'm asking you to do this is so that you learn, like if you, if you couldn't find a material that was already made, or you found a material, but it was, it was for V-Ray, but it was for 3D Studio, and it wasn't for Rhino, and you can, you can work to adapt your way into creating a material. So when we create a new material, we have several things that kind of make up that material. And we've done this a little bit already. So if I come down here and I say, I want to create a new uh, material. So I'll go to materials, and we're going to choose a new generic material. There it is. When we look at that material, I'm going to open the drawer to the right here. And this is kind of repeat from what we've talked about before. We had something called diffuse, and we had a color. And if you guys remember, we clicked on that color, and we changed the color to you know red, and suddenly the material showed up as red. So hopefully you remember that part. I have more options in the diffuse little pane here. Under diffuse here, I have color, but I also have this little checkerboard next to it. And this checkerboard allows me to insert a texture or a photograph that then is projected on the object. So if I were to click on that, it's going to ask me for one of these options. And the one that we're going to use extensively today is a bitmap. So I click on that checkerboard and I choose bitmap. And when I do that, I can go and find the files that are part of that material. So let's go over to resources. And like I said, I'm going to use my um, shingle sighting because it's a good example. And so I'm going to go into wood here and I'm going to choose my shingle sighting. And what it's looking for is it's looking for the color tiling image that represents this particular texture. So in this case, it's shingles underscore diffuse or diff. Now, depending on where you're getting your material, if somebody created this file for you, it may be named diffuse. It may not. You may have to look at the files to figure it out. But what this is, is it's just a color photograph of the siding itself. I'm going to go ahead and choose open. And when I do that, you'll see that it shows up here in my material. What we're doing, and I'm going to switch over to Photoshop just so you can see this, is the topmost layer of this material is just a color image. That's it. Somebody took an image of a, of a piece of wall, and they plopped that into to the uh, V-Ray material, and it's now going to apply to my material. So if I come back into Rhino, I now have this file assigned. If we look at my material right here, generic, you can see that it's applied. I'm going to apply this. It's going to go here, apply to layer. And we're going to put it on materials test. And if I were to render this, I'll click the little teapot if it doesn't freeze up on me, which it appears to be doing. How pleasant. Give me a second. I'm going to let it uh, see if I can get it to come through here. But if it's not coming through, 
I may have to reconnect to the remote desktop. So this happens to me too. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, disconnect it, which is drastic, I know, uh, but let me bring it back. Let's open up Chrome here. Okay, we'll start this process again. Fingers crossed. I'm gonna create a new generic material. So let's go to materials and we'll choose generic. And let's rename it this time to shingles. Okay, then in my drawer to the right, we're gonna load a diffuse map. So over here next to color, keep going to that little checkerboard and we're gonna choose a bitmap. And then we will go to my flash drive here. And I'm going to choose the shingle siding. And I'm going to choose that diffuse, which is just the color image. And once I have that color image applied, there we go, we can apply that to the whole layer. So I'll go to apply to layer material test. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. just in case, because we don't want to have things crash on me. And that's clearly the way my life is working today. So we'll let that kind of work chew on it a little bit. So what we're doing is we're applying that first image right there. Let me press control zero so we can zoom that in. Yeah, so it's that first image. Now you see below that, we start to add texture to it. So the first one is kind of the surface texture. And the second one is the actual like shingle textures where it bumps up and down. So let's go back to Rhino. And let's, I'm going to zoom in right on this, this edge right here, because I think that'll be the easiest to see. There we go. And we'll go ahead and click on the teapot to do a, a basic rendering. And when we do this first basic rendering, you'll see that the texture has been applied or the photograph of the texture has been applied. But if we look along the edge, we see no depth to this. It's as if we just pasted a picture of the texture on our object. So we wanna take that to the next level. And to do that, we'll open the V-Ray Asset Editor and we're gonna to start to look at our shingles options a little bit more carefully. So we have diffuse, that's already set. And as we come down here, we'll see something called bump. And the bump is currently turned on, but we don't have a map assigned to it yet. So under here, under bump map, we're gonna click that little checkerboard. And what we're going to choose is we're going to choose a black and white image that kind of accentuates the texture. Let me go ahead and choose that and we'll open it. So that black and white image, if I were to look at it in, uh, let's go to my resources here. I just wanna make this big enough for you to see it. So the idea is that it's kind of a high contrast black and white image, and you're seeing the wood grain texture on this image, ideally. So if we were to take that image and we apply it as our bump map over here, we can control, that there it's applied, but we can also control the amount that it applies. So right now the default is set to one. And if we perform a rendering, we should see some texture start to appear. So there it was without texture, and now if you look at the individual panels, we can see there's a little bit of texture on those panels now. So it's taken the flat image and added just a little bit of wood texture to it. Now, if this was too much wood texture, we decrease that value. 
So it's set at one right now, we could decrease it to say 0.25 and we'd have a quarter of that texture. Let's stop the render and let's start it again and take another look. And you'll see that this time there'll be much less texture than we showed last time. If, there, if we needed more texture, we could take that value and we could bump it say up to two or five and we get a lot more depth to the texture. Again, it's dependent on what it is that you're trying to create. So that level of texture corresponds to this level. So we have the first image, then it's this image right here that gives us the texture. And so you can kind of see we're getting a little bit of the wood grain texture. Now the third piece is going to actually give us the shingle texture. And you can kind of see along the edge that it gives us the steps that are in the shingle. And so that's done using a very specialized image like this, where we have two different values. We have a full black and a full white value. And so in this case, we look at the gradient, it goes from a black edge here all the way up to pure white underneath this other shingle. That's going to represent a taper that goes from, let's say, level one all the way up to level zero as it's tapering away from us. The next one starts here at level one and goes back. So if we apply that, and I actually think in, in this particular case, my, my image is backwards. We're gonna apply that in something called a diffuse layer. Now it's not listed, or excuse me, a uh, displacement layer. It's not listed here. We have diffuse, reflection, refraction, coat, opacity, bump, binding. We need a displacement. So if we click on that little plus sign, we can actually choose displacement. Now, when we start to use displacement, you'll see that it provides really nice texture, but it also increases the horsepower required to do the renderings. So this is gonna make renderings slower. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Displacement's on, and we need to once again, assign a map. So there's that little checkerboard pattern. And we'll click on that and choose bitmap. And we will then use this image. And I'll go ahead and say, OK. So there it is. Now, in this particular case, I believe I have it backwards. So I'm going to look here under the color manipulation, and I'm going to invert the image. So it actually is going from a white all the way up to black. Once I have that established, we can go back and render again. Now, the big difference is going to occur right along this edge as it starts to render. So ignore the fact that these aren't quite coming together for right now. What I want you to see is that along that edge, we're starting to get this texture pattern happening. Now we can choose how much this displacement is happening. So if we go back to our displacement map, there we go. This amount should correspond to the default units. So we've been working in inches. So that would mean that my displacement is a total of one inch, which is way too thick for uh, shingles. So I would say that the, the overall displacement is no more than a half. Maybe it's only a quarter of an inch. So I need to adjust that value. And then I could render again, and I won't get as substantial uh, of, of changes there. There we go, much, much better. And you can see it especially on that, that edge over here. Okay, so that is the displacement. And if we look at my Photoshop file right here, you can see that we take the diffuse, we add the bump, we add the displacement, and we end up with the final product of what the material looks like. So all of those layers come together to create the material. We can do something very similar with other types of materials. So in my examples, I want to show you one that has uh, like a, a transparency that's applied to it. So let's create a new material. This time it'll be like a mesh. So I'm going to come down here. We're going to create a new generic material. 
and I'll call this one mesh. Okay, so in this mesh, we need to start with a just the diffuse map, the picture, the color picture of what the mesh looks like. So let's go. Oops, I had it separated out. Let's pick the plastic coated here. Now on this one, you see that I have a picture of the mesh. I have a bump for the mesh, and I also have a transparency map for the mesh. So the most important one is this transparency one. But let's start with the diffuse. We'll go ahead and say open. There it is. If we were to take this mesh and apply it to our material test layer, and I were to then render it. The rendering that we get wouldn't be transparent because these are, are filled in because it's just an image that's projected onto our material. So what we need to do is we need to add an opacity to it. So this is a transparency. And once again, over here at opacity, we can choose that little checkerboard and choose our bitmap. And then we can pick this transparency map. Now, I'm not sure the, it need, may need to be inverted. So let's go back to the mesh and let's have a look. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and see what the rendering looks like on this one. So now we're seeing it as a transparent mesh because we added that transparency. We could add a little bit of texture to our mesh by using a bump map, although it's really not gonna do too much. So I could go in here to bump, we could add the bump because it's just wire. There's our bump. And then if we rendered it out, it might have a little bit of three dimensionality to it. Yeah, there's a little bit there. I don't think it adds too much, but just a little bit. So that's using a transparency mask. And of course, some materials would apply all the way across. So how do we go about creating these materials if you don't already have the files to begin with? And so this is where our exercise for today starts to come into play. If you've taken my uh, 135 class, you're very comfortable with Photoshop, so you could actually create a material completely from scratch by yourself. If you're not, and you haven't taken 135 yet, you may need to find some materials to work from. So I'm going to open up Google Chrome here. And the site that I really like or used to like was the V-Ray materials .box .uk. But it keeps erroring out on me. So I'm going to do instead of just a Google search for V-Ray materials. And when I do that, there's a variety of them. materials.de. let's open that one. We can come down here. Oh, I don't know what this one is. We'll open it. Here's another one. You can open it. Now, the ones that are specific to Rhino, like this one says that it's specific to Rhino, that may be beneficial because you might be able to download them and use them directly. But let's say that we went in here to masonry materials. We've got lots of advertising here. And let's say that we really liked, I don't know, this new red brick texture. And again, I'm doing this live. It looks like we have to wait before we can download it. I'll let that one wait and we'll look over here. Let's see, architecture. Yeah. All right, we could click on this clay roofing tiles, maybe. Oh, that one just downloaded directly. That's excellent. Let's go back and see. All right, download material. And that one's downloaded as well. So let's look at these materials in my downloads folder. So let's show them in the folder. And let's expand them. So right now they're in, in zip files. So let's make sure that we extract all.
And let's take this clay roofing tiles and let's extract all. And let's see what they've given us. So on the clay roofing tiles, looks like we have a diffuse or a color and we have a displacement. So they've given us those two pieces. So we could work with that. If we come over here and look at the red brick texture, all right, in this case, it looks like they just gave us the brick. That's it. So we don't have any um, diffuse or bump to work with on that one. So some of these are going to be better or worse than others. This one looks like it'll work out pretty well. So I could create something out of these clay roofing tiles. And so I'm asking you to work with four different materials today. The, the easiest strategy with these is if, you, if you're not comfortable in Photoshop, just work with, with ones that you find online. And I'm asking you to kind of assemble them together. So let's create a new material here. Let's go to materials, generic, and this was clay tiles. All right, so I had my diffuse. We'll click on that little checkerboard. We'll go to bitmap. There's my diffuse. And remember, this one also had a displacement. So we'll come back to my clay tiles here and we're gonna add the displacement layer. There it is. We'll turn it on and then we'll find this checkerboard. Go to bitmap and we're gonna choose that file as our displacement map. There it is. So let's, pl let's apply those clay tiles to this piece. So we'll go to apply to layer materials test and then we can go ahead and render and you can see that we now have the clay roof tiles established. Now, if we wanted to change the dimension, remember, we could go back in here and choose under displacement what amount, what value we want for that displacement. Okay, so what I'm asking you to do for these presets is essentially create the material and then perform a rendering of this material so that we can see what it looks like and you can prove that you, you did it. That, that's part of what you'll be turning in. Now, for those of you that have taken 135 before, or feel comfortable in Photoshop, I'd like for you to attempt to create a material fully from scratch. And it's just gonna help you learn this process. So I'm gonna go through it right now. If you haven't taken Photoshop, don't panic. You don't have to do it. It's something that I think just enhances your learning. So what I need is I need an image to start from. So I'm gonna use the Unsplash website. which is a Creative Commons licensed set of images. They also happen to be high resolution. And I'm gonna type in their sighting. Now, I don't want something that's on an angle. So I want something that's relatively flat and has relatively even color characteristics across it. So something like this looks pretty good. So I could click on that. That looks pretty good. And I could download that. There's the download free. There we go. Now, maybe there's other ones, though, that are decent. Maybe this one looks pretty good. You will probably make something out of that. Let's download that. And you also, you may keep scrolling. Maybe that red one. And load more photos. I think one of the big challenges is always just finding a good example. All right, I'm gonna make one of those, those previous ones work. What you want to avoid are pieces that have a notable pattern because when the, the, the texture repeats on itself, those patterns will start to really stand out. So we wanna make sure that we're not getting you know, strong repeating patterns. Yeah, that's good enough. We'll use one of those ones that I already have. So let's go ahead and open that image. I'll go to file and then open. And this was in my downloads folder. 
And here's, here's that first example. Now, obviously I don't want the gutter to repeat. So I'm gonna carefully kind of think about how would I crop this? So let's crop it down so that that part kind of gets cut off. We wanna cut off that part right there that has, uh, it has that little seam. And maybe we wanna pull this one up. Maybe we want it maybe to right about there. And maybe we want this to come over so that's right about there. Now, some things that will really help us is the more straight across these lines become, the easier it is to make this work. So I'm gonna go ahead and commit to this right now. And we'll look at it. it looks like I have a slight tip. So let me uh, show my rulers. Let's go to view, rulers. It's gonna allow me to drag a guide down to see how straight that line is. See how that's really not very straight? Likewise, if we came down here a little bit more, let's take a look at this one. Oh, well, that one's pretty close. That one's pretty close. That one's off just a little bit. Let's look at this one at the bottom here. That one's almost, almost spot on. So really, when we transform this, we really need to just work with this side. So let me go up to the Edit menu. Oh, I can't transform because it's a locked background layer. Let me right click and say Layer from Background. So I can work with it. And then we'll go into my uh, Edit Transform, and we're going to work with Skew. And what skew will allow me to do is it's gonna allow me to stretch that up just a little bit. And you see that I'm essentially trying to fix that line so that it's straight. The bottoms maintained its relative straight. Okay, I'm relatively happy with it. Now that I've fixed that problem, we can commit to it. And I still have my crop, all of that looks pretty good. At this point, we need to make this something that repeats over and over again. And I can do that using the offset filter. So I'll go to filter and then other and then offset. And what this does is it takes the image and we'll do it uh, horizontally to start is that it will, it will take the image and then divide it. And you might be able to see this right there in the middle. It'll divide it and create a seam. So this edge matches up perfectly with that edge. And the seam is now in the middle. The vertical seam, if I were to move that, is now happening right along that line. Okay, But we can see that they're lining up pretty well. So in an ideal sense, what I want is I want to get my seams kind of over in the middle, and then I'll say, okay. And it's now my job to go in and heal. Let me press control plus here. The spots where these transitions happen. So I'll do that using the clone stamp tool. So we'll pick the clone stamp tool. I need to make my brush a little bit bigger. I'm just using a basic, relatively soft brush. I'll hold down alt to copy from. And I can come over here and I can kind of heal that spot. I can copy from and I can kind of blur that line there. I might copy over here and blur that line a little bit to make those go away. I can hold down Alt again. Actually, I don't like it. Let's take this one there. And we'll make that one heal. There's a slight dip to it. Let's come down here. I'll hold down Alt and we'll heal that one right there. We'll hold down Alt and see if we can't fix this one. There you go, that's pretty good. Now this middle one is gonna involve a little bit of assistance. So we fixed that, but I need to kind of fix this whole piece along the way. So I may end up copying from the line above. Let's copy from right about there down to right about here and it may see I'm, I'm doubling up on that um i really should probably just have a bigger brush make that a little bit bigger and i'm going to actually copy it from here 
up to right there. So I'm, I'm making that little hole go away. Almost done. All right, one last little bit to copy. Make that go away. All right, so there's still a little bit of a seam showing in the middle. I could spend more time, but you guys don't need to sit here and watch me make it perfect. Uh, let me press control zero so I can see the whole thing. This is now a tiling texture, so I can actually use this. Oh, looks like I didn't quite copy it all the way. I was zoomed in too far, hold on. All right, there we go. So once I like this, I'll save it. I'll go to File and then Save As. I'm going to save it on my computer. We don't care about the Photoshop file. We need to save it as a PNG or a JPEG. So I'll choose a JPEG right here. And I'm going to call this Citing Dash uh, Diffuse. And I'll click Save. Okay, now for the bump map, the texture, this really doesn't have a lot of texture on it. So I could just create a black and white image of it. So we could go to layer, new adjustment layer, and we'll do a channel mixer. And we would turn this to monochrome, but there's not too much to really do. But for the sake of argument, we'll go ahead and do it. I'll go to file and then I'll go to uh, save as. And once again, this is gonna be a PNG, which we no longer have. So let me do an export instead. Let me go to cancel. Let's go to file, export, export as. We're gonna make sure it's a PNG. We'll go ahead and click on export. And this would be siding, and this one would be the bump. And we'll click Save. Then the last piece that we need <coughs> is we need to think about the shape of this, the tip. And in this case, our front edge is the, uh, the highest piece, and the back edge is the lowest piece. So I'm going to create a gradient, and I'll do that using my selection tool here. stop right there and I need to create a gradient I'll use the gradient tool from white to black front edge oh I need a new layer sorry front edge to back edge I'm going to hold down shift so that it stays straight and that's going to create a black to white gradient alternatively I could go from back edge to front edge if I wanted it to start black and go to white now this then repeats on each level. So I could just copy it, control C and control V because I already have it. And all of these siding lines are the same and I could drop it right on top, right there. Drop another one right there. Come down. And drop this one. We'll just go in order. Right there. I actually think I'm growing a little bit, so I may need to make an adjustment there.
And the last one, control V. And we'll drop it into place right there. Then I can go ahead and save this. So I'll go to file and then export. And we're going to export as a PNG. And this one is going to be the displacement. And I'll go ahead and say, OK. So I have those created. Now I can go back into Rhino. I can go back to my materials test here. And I can create a new material. And this one is going to be the siding. Under my diffuse, I need to choose my diffuse color. So we'll go to bitmap. And there's my diffuse. Perfect. Then we need to bring in my uh, bump. So let's go back to siding here. We'll go down to bump. And I will choose my bump. There it is. And then I'll go back to my siding. And the last one will be displacement. So I'm going to add the displacement. So let's go to displacement. Turn it on. And we are going to choose a bitmap. And this time we'll pick the displacement. There it is. And if we were to look at the siding now, we should have our, our slope to it. Now, the slope on this is probably no more than a half inch. So let's change it to a half inch. Let's apply this to our material test. And then we can go ahead and render it out. So the key here is that I'm able to create a material based on what it is that I'm trying to, to build. That looks, for this scale, that looks way too big for those, those siding slopes. So I probably need to adjust that. You can see it right there along the side. So there's some adjustments that need to be made for this to actually look correct. Uh, and that would be back here uh, under the displacement. Now remember, I could also texture map this object. And so this might look OK if the siding was 8 inches. But if it's small like this, it might look wrong. So I could come back in here and I could edit that value to 0.25, for example. And maybe then it looks correct. So like I said before, we're trying to work with four of the materials. You can work with some of the, the pre-done ones and load them in. If you want to save your material after you create it, you did all this work, you want to save it, that's, that's a great idea. If you select it and then come down here to the little save asset to file icon, it will let you save a V-Ray material file, a VR mat. So we can save that. It, what it doesn't include, however, is all the images that go with it. So that's the material file, but we need the images as well. So if we look here, there's the siding VR mat. I need that plus the displacement, plus the bump, plus the diffuse. So I need all four of these as part of my material. So I would take all of those and move them onto my flash drive. Let's right click and say copy. Let's go into my uh, OneDrive. Let's go into resources. We'll go into siding. Let's go into wood here and I create a new file. There's a new folder, we'll call this siding. And then I would paste all of those files here. So it's the VR mat plus the displacement, the bump, and the diffuse, because that whole package is what goes together. The old version of V-Ray had this great option to pack the materials, which meant it got all the stuff together and put it in a zip file for you. The new version of V-Ray, for whatever reason, has, has eliminated that. So you don't have that option anymore to just pack the material. But it's a good strategy to save your material 
once you get it looking the way you want so that you can reuse it. In terms of what you're turning in by Canvas today, all I really want are four renderings of new materials that you've worked on. So we can go to our set view. We can go back to the material test view. There it is. We can render this out and then you'll save this as a JPEG or a PNG. It's building it out right now. There it is in its finished format. I want you to save that and then post that. Uh, there'll be four of them total to Canvas as part of this exercise. You don't have to post the VR mat or the zip file. Um, I really only need the JPEGs, but make sure that you save them should you want to going forward. A uh, couple other notes about materials, and then I will let you go. Um, you're welcome to try any one of these websites. I can't promise that any of them work better than others. There are some materials that are complicated, like the ones that have fur in them or grass or whatever. Uh, they're often made using different strategies. Um, and so if we were to look at that one here, let's go ahead and show it in folder. Sometimes they use things called fur to create it. We're not getting into that just yet. So we have a diffuse, we have a bump, uh, we have a reflection, we have a normal, uh, but this is not readable by our version uh, of V-Ray. This is something for 3D Studio. So it doesn't always work. You could play around with it if you want, but it doesn't always work the way uh, you think it should. Some websites, however, do have really good V-Ray materials that are built for Rhino. One of them is the Flying Architecture website. If I can type. Flyingarchitecture.com. I think I've mentioned this before in class. If you go to their store, you can then go into their materials. I would recommend checking the toggle for only free. And then these are all materials that are really, they're built for Rhino that you could actually download. There's a cliff texture. You can download that for free. Go ahead and download it. Now uh, you might have to make an account. No, it went ahead and downloaded. Let's take a look at this file. Let's show it in the folder. And let's extract it. Right, so in this one, they have a bunch of different pieces of information, but they also have a VR mat file. And that VR mat file allows us to actually just load this material straight away. So I can come back to my V-Ray here. Let's open that asset editor. And this time I can go ahead and I can load it. There's a file folder for import asset file. I could go into that cliff file that they already created and I could load the VR mat. And that would then load in all of the, the pieces or it should. Now, sometimes it gets lost. So in this case, it can't find these materials. So I would need to go through and find the materials for it. So this was the I'm not sure which I need to find out which one they're looking for here. Cliff O2 base color. Cliff O2 base color. There we go. I can load that one in. And this is why it's important to know what's happening on these various layers. Let's go back to Cliff O2. Looks like they have a reflection layer. That's probably missing. Yep, there it is. So let's make sure we're choosing the reflection. And again, this is why you need to know. Come down here and see what else. They have a bump. Oh, it doesn't. Looks like maybe they added a second bump. There you go. So let's find the bump. I'm not sure. It might be they, they might be calling it their height. Let's look. Oh, normal. They're calling it their normal. Okay, that's fine. So let's get their normal. And then come back here. And let's see, do they have a displacement? Yep, they have a displacement. So let's turn that on. 
and their displacement is called the height. So the, the point is that their names might not match exactly, but as you start to build this through, you'll see that this starts to become that texture. And so if you just know where to look, you can oftentimes build this together, even if you're missing certain pieces of your, uh, of your components. Okay, so I know I ran a little bit over today. For those of you that are in my first checking group, if you wouldn't mind sticking around, that'd be great. Um, we're going to go ahead and, and end the lecture portion for now. And I'll see you guys all next Monday. Does anybody have any questions? Um, professor? Yes. When I tried to extract the file, it didn't show up like several images you have. It's so a... <laughs> sometimes the materials aren't made with images. So depending on it, like leather, for example, is, is oftentimes made out of stuff that's contained natively within Rhino, not from images. So mm -hmm. if, if you try to extract it and you're only getting a VR mat or, or another file that's not an image file, just pick a different material for today's exercise. Uh, yeah, I've tried for like five or six and it's showing that it's disabled. So. All right, well, let's, it... let's take a look. Mm -hmm. Hold on a little bit. I want to let anybody else go that wants to go and then just stick around and we'll, we'll solve this, okay? Okay. Thank you for class. You bet.